When we think about Black History Month, who do we think about? We think about political activists like Nelson Mandela and Martin Luther King. We think about people of the clergy like Desmond Tutu and Muslims. When we think about Muslim black people who've contributed to history, we think of Muhammad Ali. Have we delved deeper into history and thought about people from the time of the Prophet? Yes, you're right, Bilal Radiallahu, the first Black Lives Matter story. But let's look into the recesses of history even further and think about a female Sahabi who has contributed to history and has been forgotten into the leaves of history. Um Ayman, one of the first people to become a Muslim. Just second to Khadija Radiallahu, she was there from the birth of the Prophet right the way through to his death. Um Ayman was not rich. She was not a queen. She was not a princess. She was not a noble woman. She was not even in one of the elite families. She was not a member of the elite families. She was in fact an Abyssinian slave purchased by the Prophet's father before he was born. And she was one of the women who was blessed with the gift of being able to nurse the Prophet and when his mother lay dying, she instructed Um Ayman to take care of the Prophet for as long as she could. And she did so. She was also blessed with being able to live with the Prophet. When her own husband died, she moved in with the Prophet ﷺ's family and her son came with her. Um Ayman was the second woman to accept Islam. The first, of course, being the mother of nations, Khadija radiallahu anhu. Once she'd moved in with the Prophet, the Prophet said to his companions, if anybody wants to marry a woman of Jum Jannah, then marry Um Ayman. This was considered by Zayd ibn Haritha. Now you have to remember, Um Ayman had passed her prime. She was no longer young, she was widowed, and she already had a child. But he decided to marry her, marry her despite being 20 years younger, not because of her looks, not because of her wealth, but because she was a woman of Jannah. Um Ayman always interacted with the Prophet with care and compassion. Now you must remember, being a former slave, Um Ayman was not very educated. So on occasion she would go to the Prophet and say, Salam Alaikum, and said, Assalamu Alaikum. And then she would be embarrassed because Arabic was not her native language. The Prophet noted that, and he was, he was happy to accept that she was not saying Assalamu Alaikum, she was saying Salaamu Alaikum, he allowed her to do that. Now if the Prophet can teach somebody like Um Ayman who was around him with su such compassion, why can't we treat people who are less educated than us or who are less fortunate than us with the same compassion? On another occasion, Um Ayman sat there weeping by the Prophet. He had picked up one of his dying children and was weeping. He asked her, why do you weep when I am so close by you? And she said, why shouldn't I weep when the Messenger of Allah is weeping too? The Messenger then said, I'm not weeping, it's compassion. The believer is fine whatever the situation, even when he has been pulled from the body and he praises Allah, the mighty and the sublime. Just this one short story, just this one small narration tells us that in spite of being somebody who was from a poor background, somebody who did not receive education as well as other people around her, she knew the value of what she had when the Prophet was around. She had outlived everybody who was beloved to her. <clears throat> the Prophet, both her husbands, both her children, she had lived through two leaderships of the first two Khalifas and she had she passed away mid leadership of Uthman radiallahu anhu. She was a remarkable woman who was called a woman of Jannah during her lifetime, not afterwards.